Hey everyone, my name is Jason. I'm a solo game developer living in Sweden and I'm working on my solo game project in the Godot engine. And today we're going to do a little bit of a kind of like a tutorial thing, just a thing that I realized or learned recently. And I was like, I'll make a little video about it. Maybe it'll help some people out. And it's going to be about what happens if when your, your editor crashes and there's no logs, there's no information, there's no stack trace. What do you do, right? Well, I have one little solution that might help you, okay? So first of all, let's describe the issue just a little bit. So this is the Godot engine, right? And usually when you get your errors, they'll, they'll pop up down here and you get some information or in your IDE, you'll have it down here in, in the output, the debug console. You get some kind of information, some kind of lead, right? But um, there's a bug that I have that I can manufacture. So I'm going to put this in here. And if I hot reload the engine, so if I build this now and then switch over the engine, we'll see that it just disappears. Ta-da! <laughs> there it goes. It's just gone. And there's nothing. There's no logs. There's no output. There's nothing. Now, you might be wondering, well, maybe the engine saves a log file when it closes. Games do that all the time as well, right? Uh, unfortunately, that is not the case here. So uh, there is a there there are logs. Okay, so I'll, um, if you do percentage app data, good app user data, uh, and then you can find your project. So pixel game is my one, and then go to logs. There are log files here, and typically it does that, right? Um, but there is nothing here in this one, and and this was from. I don't know, like a while ago. I'm not even sure when these get updated. So what do we do? What do we do in this case? Uh, well, first of all, let's reset things so that we can launch the game properly. The other solution that we have to potentially capture the output of the engine is to actually just launch it through the command prompt, right? Or the command line, right? And so you can normally open that by just, you know, Windows CMD and then command prompt. I already have one open here that's got big text, so we'll use this one, right? And I think like Linux and Mac users, I think you can use the terminal for this. I, I don't see why not, right? Um, and what we can do here instead is we can launch the, the, the editor through here. And even if it crashes, the command prompt will stay open and still capture anything that the engine outputs, okay? So how do we do that? Well, the first thing you're gonna need is the path to your engine. And I have my path to my engine right here. I'm using uh, quotes around it because there are spaces in the path, which is maybe a bad thing. But either way, you can use quotes with or well. Either way, it's probably fine. The next thing I want to do is I want to add the editor flag that's telling, you know, that's saying to open the engine uh, in the editor as opposed to running a game or something like that, right? And then I want to add the path uh, flag and then specify the, the path to my project, okay? So that's saying which project do we want to open, basically. So open the engine as an editor at, you know, at this project, right? For this project. That's basically it. I think I rebuilt. I think we're set to run again. All right. Press enter. Here we are. And we can see here that this has output some stuff. We've got the engine running in the back. And we can also see that if you check the logs that we had before, right? Um, this is this is what Godot kind of outputs, basically. It's the same thing, the Godot version, Vulkan, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so let's reintroduce the bug to this. I'll uh, start building, and then we'll look at the command prompt. Here we are. All right, so we've recreated the bug. It's crashed, but the command prompt has some stuff in it now including this stuff is kind of useless um but we've got some other stuff here right uh here invalid cost exception unable to cost objective type resource to controller settings so this was actually an issue not in the way that i'm recreating it now but this was actually an issue that i was running into while i was porting the controller icons plugin to c sharp uh link to that in the description below if you want to learn more about that plugin um and I had to use this here to figure out, to help me figure out uh, how to solve something. Um, but we can see here that, yeah, it's it's the cost of the, you know, um, 
the resource type doesn't match basically. And that's exactly what the issue is. We also get some other information in the stack trace, like, you know, we're sort of being called from the controller icons constructor, um, you know, controller icons dot CS line 41. Like this is far more information we have now to help us diagnose whatever the issue is. And so from here, we can actually begin debugging the issue, the, 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 the problem. And so this is how easy it is. So uh, this is a, a nice little um, additional tool or additional trick to have in, in your bag to help um, you know solve this issue. Uh, I don't know if there are other situations where everything just crashes that this won't help in, but this is at least one more uh, tool. Uh, now, there's another thing that you can do. So we've, we've added these flags, right? Editor, path, and things like that. There's another flag that might be helpful. And that's the verbose one. So let's refix this so that the engine starts correctly. Rebuild. And then if we do verbose, basically what this one does, if you didn't know, uh, it outputs way more information. You're gonna see this is getting pretty dank here. We're gonna have a lot of stuff here, right? And so it could be that like, if you do what we did before, but you weren't getting enough information, you can try the verbose flag and see if you get anything uh, more that's useful, right? So if we reintroduce the bug, um, I believe everything is kind of loaded. So if I build, we'll see that it's trying to hot reload and then we get the error again, engine disappears. These are the errors that we got before, but we also see that there's a lot more stuff here. Found class, found class, loading resource, uh, and it was trying to load this resource settings test, which is the wrong resource to load. And then immediately after we get the error. Now that doesn't always mean that the error is associated with the previous line, but in this particular case, it does, right? Again, this is just a tool to help you diagnose things. So uh, that's basically it. That's all I wanted to cover today. Uh, if I want to put a bow on this, there's a couple more things to talk about. Uh, that is that you can use this line here uh, as a shortcut in case you didn't know. So for example, um, I basically only work on my game. So normally when you open Godot, you get this, this project select window, uh, and then you select your project, and then it opens the editor in your project. Um, you can, uh, if you use a um, shortcut, so this is the shortcut that I have on my toolbar down here, um, and you, you do the exact same thing, the make the target be the engine, and then you do the editor flag, and then you do path, and then the path to your project. Uh, then if you just click the shortcut, um, it opens up straight into your project and you don't have to go through the project select window uh, in Godot, which is pretty nice if you're only working on one project, I think. So you can do that. Uh, the other thing that I would want to share is uh, I'll put a link to this uh, command line tutorial in the description below as well. And it gives you more information on how to use the command line and launching Godot from the command line and things like that, as well as a bunch of other uh, uh, flags or variables or things that you, you know, settings options basically that you might want to use, including their fancy little shortcuts. So you don't have to type out verbose if you don't want to. You could just use V or you could just use E for editor. Who knows? Okay. Uh, yeah. And that's pretty much it. I uh, hope that helped. If you found this useful or interesting, please give the video a like. If you have any other cool tips or information for other people, please leave it in the comments below and others can go down there and check check it out to see if they can learn anything more from this. Uh, if you appreciate my dev content or my streaming content, I stream every Saturday, twitch.tv slash gemballs. If you enjoy any of that and want to support it even further, do consider becoming a member here on YouTube, a subscriber on Twitch or a patron on Patreon. Uh, no matter where you subscribe on any of those things, you get perks. More information about that in the description as well. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a lovely day. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.